Hi guys, this is Mr. Adams from Midwood High School, and this is a video um, solving some of the questions that were um, asked you to name and write certain organic formulas. Guys, you got to get your um, reference table, and specifically, we're going to look at tables P, Q, and R. And I want you to give you this definition, right? Um, the functional group or a functional group is an, an atom. Okay, it could be an atom, it could be a group of atoms, or it could be um, bonds which give a compound its identity. Okay, so all the guys on table R can be considered functional groups. Alkenes, alkynes, alkanes are also functional groups because they have a specific identity which they give to the compound in terms of physical and chemical properties. Okay, so let's say, right, you have to name this guy over here. All righty. All right. So the first thing you do from experience, right, we count the longest number of carbons. So we see we have one, two, three, four, five carbons. What's the prefix of five? The prefix of five is pench, right? We notice it's only carbons and hydrogens in this guy. So this guy is a hydrocarbon. So we actually do have a table, right, with hydrocarbons. Okay, here. All righty. Now, we have three types of hydrocarbons that we, we're familiar with, right? There's uh, alkanes, alkenes, and alkynes, all right? So what we do, okay, we don't guess. We notice alkanes have single bonds, okay? We notice alkenes have double bonds, and we notice alkynes have triple bonds, okay? So what we're going to do, we see that we have a triple bond there, so we know it's an alkyne, and it gets a Y and E ending. Okay, so we can say pent. Now, what does pent mean? Pent means five, five carbons, and the Y and E pentine means we have a triple bond somewhere. Now, we have to indicate the lowest number in terms of that triple bond, right? So let's try from left to right. Let's try from right to left and see which one gives us the lowest number. So you basically could visualize, right? If we come from left to right, we're going to have carbon number one there, carbon number two there, and that's where the trobon is coming out of, right? Carbon number two. So we simply call this guy two pentine and you're done, okay? Pent five carbons, ein, triple bond. The triple bond is at carbon number two and you're done, okay? Now, guys, I was looking at this guy, and guess what? I made a mistake with this. Hex, right, has what? Six carbons, right? So let's write that down. One, two, three, four, five, six, right? Ein means what? Triple bond, yes. Okay, good. We put a triple bond at carbon number one. So let's put a triple bond at carbon number one. Okay, let's put the hydrogen there. Now, guys, what did I put here? I put two methyl, right? Now, guys, I cannot put anything else here now that's what happens when i make things out of my head and don't you know check it over so i cannot put anything else on carbon number two so there's no such thing as two methyl one hexane i could put it somewhere else on the other carbons but then it wouldn't be two methyl uh, so this name is a violation and uh, so you're not responsible for that okay no problem okay so let's move on all right so we have this structure right here, right? Okay, and we're asked to name it. Now, the first thing you do, you count the longest number of carbons. Okay, you see you have one, two, three, four carbons, right? What's the prefix of four? <clears throat> you look on table um, P, you'll see the prefix of four is but, right? Okay, and it's all single bonds. So normally we would say butane, all right? So let's write that down, butane. But we have to modify that name because we have an OH group. Now, guys, if you forget what an OH functional group, the naming of it is, you don't panic. You flip to table R and you scroll through it. You go from top to bottom. Where, who has an OH group? Alcohols, right? And you notice alcohols always have an OL ending at the end. So what we're going to do, we're going to drop this E and add O-L. So the name is going to be butanol. All right. So the thing is, we're not going to leave it like that because which carbon, guys, is this OH group hanging off of? 
in terms of the lowest number. You can check from left to right. You can check from right to left. We see it's hanging off of carbon number two in the parent. This is your parent right here, okay? So you simply call it what? You simply call it 2-butanol. What does 2-butanol mean? I have four carbons, okay, with the all alcohol or OH group somewhere, alcohol group somewhere. And where is it at? It's at carbon number two, okay? And you're done. Okay, so let's do this guy over here. 2-methyl, two 2-hexanol. Two now, what does hex mean? Okay, six carbons. What does all mean? I have an OH group somewhere. And where is that OH group? On carbon number two. So let's try that. Okay, let me use a different color. Okay, so we got one, two, look kind of the same, three, four, five, six. Okay, we got six carbons. Okay, all righty. So what we need now on carbon number two, we need an OH group. So I'll put it right here. O H. Okay. All right. So that's taken care of for the two hexanol part, right? But we also have a methyl group, and that methyl group is where? Is on carbon number two also. What is a methyl group? What does the prefix meth mean? Meth means one carbon, right? And the YL means it's a branch hanging off the side. So we're going to put a one carbon branch hanging off the side, hanging off the side of the what? Hanging off the side of the parent. This right here, okay, guys, that's our parent. And this is the one carbon branch hanging off the side. So all you have to do now, you put your lines in. Now, guys, please be very careful when putting your lines in. You know, carbon forms only one bonds all right so don't go crazy and, and i mean carbon forms four bonds and hydrogen forms one bond so don't go crazy putting lines all over the place make sure carbon always has four bonds no more no less okay so let's move on okay this guy right here now this guy i noticed was a little tricky for some folks but we're not going to panic we see now we have what we have a double bond Okay, with a hydrogen next to it. It's carbon double bond O with a hydrogen next to it. Now, this guy right here, this group right here, is called a carbonyl group. And when that carbonyl group has a hydrogen next to it, <coughs> okay, it's called a aldehyde group. And you notice aldehyde groups have a what ending? Have an AL ending. Okay, so we're not going to panic. We count our number of carbons. One, two, three, four, five. Now, what's the prefix of five? The prefix of five is pent. Now, normally, right, we would say pentane. But since this has a double bond, C double bond O with an H next to it, we're going to drop the E. We're going to add AL and call it pentanal. Do we need a number for aldehyde groups? No, we don't. Reason being, this aldehyde group right here is always 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 going to be carbon number one so we sort of kind of don't have to say one pentanol it's understood if you write pentanol you have to put it on the first carbon either end okay so let's move on all right so we're looking at three methyl heptanol what does hept mean Hept means seven right so don't panic if you can't remember the prefixes you look on table p all right, so let's write seven carbons down someplace. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, right? Okay, um, I'm going to put a double bond and H there. So double bond O and an H. So this right here, folks, that part right there, that's my aldehyde group. How do I know to put it there? Because I see the ending AL, and I know it always has to go at the end. I'm not panicking. Hept means seven carbons. Now, before we finish it, it has methyl, three methyl, right? So you must, 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 guys. In this case, you can't choose either end. You must choose this guy as carbon number one. This aldehyde group, this is carbon number two. That's carbon number three right there. And then you're going to write in your, um, your methyl group, okay? So let's write the methyl group in. What's meth mean? One carbon. L, methyl, one carbon hanging off the side. 
a one carbon branch. It goes right there. Your right shore lines in and you're done. Now, word of warning, guys. A couple of you guys did this and you did it well. Some of you guys made a tiny, tiny mistake where you put a bond right here. You can't put a bond there because we have one, two, and a double bond there. So two plus two is four, right? So that guy's filled. You cannot put an extra line right there, okay? So that's a violation. No problem, okay? Let's move on to this guy below here. All right, this guy. All right, so... We count our longest number of carbons. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, right? So what's the prefix of six? The prefix of six is hex. Now, we have a C double bond O right here. But what do we have on both sides? We have carbons on both sides. So you don't panic. Let's say you forgot. You don't quite remember how to, um, how to name this guy. You go back to your, um, your table R. And you see that if you have a C double bond O with carbons on both sides, it's going to be a ketone. And ketones have their own ending, right? No problem. So what you do, okay, what you do is you say to yourself, all righty, um, I'm going to count the number of carbons again. One, two, three, four, five, six. I'm going to write hex down. Okay, hex. Now, normally, it would have been what? It would have been hexane, right? But we can't write hexane anymore. We have to write O and E. Why? Because it's a ketone. So it changes to hexanone, okay? Because it's a ketone. All right. How do I know it's a ketone? I have a C, double bond O, and carbons on both sides. All right. So you have to indicate the position of this guy right here, this carbonyl group, okay? Where is it located? It's located at carbon number one, carbon number two, carbon number three. So this guy will be what? It'll be three hexanone and you're done, okay? So let's name the guy next to it, all righty? Okay, all right. So we have four methyl two pentanone. What does pent mean again? I forgot. Pent means five carbons, right? So you can write five carbons down. One, two, three, four, and five, okay? Own, own, ketone. Where is that C double bond O group, that carbonyl group going to be at? They're telling you it's at carbon number two. So this is carbon number two right here. Okay, coming from left to right, I'll put C double bond O right there. No problem. Okay. Now, we have methyl group on carbon number four. Now, ladies and gentlemen, if this is carbon number two, right, you have to continue in that direction. This is carbon number three there, okay? And this right here is carbon number four. So I'm going to put my methyl group there. Bam. One carbon hanging out the side. Don't mix and match. If you count it from one direction, stay with that direction, okay? And you're good to go. All right, so put your lines in. Bam, there, bam, bam, and one up there and one at the bottom there. Remember, I cannot put another bond here, people, because I got one, two, three, four bonds already. Carbon's satisfied. He's happy. He doesn't want any more bonds, all right? He's good, so don't... Uh, for incidentation and put a bond under there, under the carbonyl group. No problem. Okay, getting there. We have this guy right here to name, right? It looks strange. It looks funny. We have oxygen, single bonded, single bonded on both sides to carbons. Now, guys, if you're not sure, keep saying this over and over again, don't make the name up. You go to table R, right? And you look for a guy where there's O in the middle, O in the middle, single bonded, okay, with carbons on both sides, okay? And that's going to be a what? That's going to be an ether, okay? So remember what, how we did from before, right? In terms, of the previous, um, in terms of the previous video notes, we said this guy right here, okay, this oxygen with the single lines on both sides acts as the parent, and these guys hanging off the side act as branches. So... You say three carbon branch, the three carbon branch will be what? 
In terms of prefix, it will be prop or prop, propyl, okay? Two carbon branch will be what? Will be E-T-H-F, ethyl, okay? And you write ether at the ends, and you're done. Propyl, ethyl, ether. Now, guys, could you write ethyl, ethyl, propyl, ether? Yes, you can. Okay, so that's the nice thing about ether. So there's no numbers involved, and you can switch these guys around. No problem. You can call it that too. All right. Okay. Last one. Almost there. How do we name, how do we draw the structure, right? How do we draw the structure for dipropyl ether? You don't panic. You say to yourself, if I have an ether on my hands, I must have an oxygen with single bonds on both sides, okay? Now, I need a certain number of carbons here. I need a certain number of carbons there, right? And I'm looking over here, and I'm seeing the word propyl, right? So I know I have to put propyl on one of the sides. So I'll put propyl here. One, two, three. That's my propyl group. But since it has the prefix di, right? It's telling me I have two of the same thing, two of the same branch. So I'm going to put another propyl group on the other side, and I am done. So that's dipropyl ether. Now, guys, remember, don't go bond happy. Oxygen forms what? Only two bonds. So don't stick any other bonds in oxygen, okay? That would be a... Uh, major, major um, violation. So we don't do that. Oxygen forms two bonds for our purposes. All right, guys. I know this video is a bit long, but we got through all the guys. I made a bit of an um, error in terms of this guy that I gave you for this guy right here. Okay. All right. But no problem. Um, hard work plus sacrifice equals success. Please, guys, stay safe. Stay safe. Um, things are winding down, and um, we'll get through this. Take care.